and then I, I I bet you you somehow um have listened to it along reading the score, so you know what's going on in the music. Uh, I mean, when we talk about particular timbre things, uh, probably is bad. It's not a really good idea to play uh, through the uh, fire the uh, internet. It's it's not really, uh, you know, uh, real. It's pretty um, fake somehow. So, but uh, today I will try to do my presentations along with the score instead of sound. Um, hope you don't mind. Uh, but of course, I've written out uh, all the um, thoughts and then my concepts about how I do with this uh, particularly uh, writing. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, since 2006, I've started working on mixed ensemble writings. So the first piece is for uh, pipa and a double bass. That was the earliest try. And I uh, was invited by two musicians, wonderful musicians, pipa player and a double bass player. They said, you know, we want to play together. Do you want to write something for us? So I said, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very, uh, 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 very successful for me. I mean, I find this quite interesting to do it. Although I mean, it's very hard to to say in terms of a, a, a promotion to to promote this kind of music, uh, it's very hard because it's very rare for two musicians from different worlds and then they uh, come together and then to become a group to play for. It's very hard. Um, it's not very common. Uh, so. Uh, and then I've worked on the music theater piece for 14 players. In this piece, I also included the, the pipa. And then later on, I start working on yearning for Jun and the double bass. Uh, so the piece I'm gonna talk about more today. Mm -hmm. And then later on, write another piece uh, for 10 players, which also uh, includes pipa. And then 2013, I wrote a piece. Uh, I mean, I do an improvisation uh, uh, with the mixed ensemble voices, pipa, jeng, bamboo flutes, piano. Um, and 2014, I finished this Emanations of Tara, uh, which is a commissioned piece, a particular written for pipa and then other four Western instruments. Uh, it's probably is the most uh, uh, audacious uh, uh, work in my in this kind of a uh, genre. Uh, in 2015, I write a piece for flute, zheng, and the viola. So if you know the, uh, I mean, I'm sure you guys know the uh, Debussy trio. So it's basically almost like the replica of Debussy trio, but uh, instead of using harp, I used Zheng, zheng. Ah, because zheng in Chinese tradition is pretty much like a water, uh, like a harp. Uh, in 2018, uh, I wrote another piece for three Chinese instruments and then chamber orchestra, a Western orchestra. 19, I wrote a piece for Qing, it's a seven string zither. Uh, it's an ancient instrument, right? I mean, it's pretty, it's probably the oldest Chinese instrument. Qing and then the violin, viola, and cello. So it's a quartet. Um, <clears throat> and then most recent, I've done a pipa concerto. Uh, so for pipa and the chamber orchestra. So uh, I've gone through a pretty uh, expensive um, trip uh, doing all these kind of uh, mixed ensemble writing. Um, so today uh, I'm not going to I'm going to talk about these two pieces, you know, the highlighted two pieces, because I believe, I, I think these two pieces are probably one of my best representative uh, pieces among all these uh, attempts. Um, so let's move on to the yearning. Uh, this is for Zheng and the double bass, um, you know, written for particular to uh, musicians, they are a couple, uh, they are married couple. 
So uh, that's why I really want to create a piece for, you know, husband and wife. It's very rare they have this, you know, combination of instrumental um, combination. So a wife uh, does Zheng and then the husband does double bass. So um, of course, uh, maybe for most of you know that Zheng is a plugged string instrument. And uh, of course, and it has lots of, uh, you know, sound effects, uh, lots of different uh, uh, timbres you can explore as a composer. But of course, I mean, a composition is composition. It, it's not the point that you're trying to utilize all the possibilities. And you you always use something you want. And you, you always write, choose something, choose some timbres, work for the idea of your composition instead of you know trying to demonstrate all sorts of uh, uh, timbre possibilities. Uh, so uh, I've made a summarize, uh, summary, you know, I, I summarized all the uh, often used, probably uh, uh, most used uh, elements, timbre elements in this piece. So the first one, um, you know, you have when you see this uh, um, cross, uh, that means you use the finger flesh instead of the artificial nail. And then when you don't have, uh, when you don't have this cross, so you basically you use the artificial nails, uh, because for the drum players, when you uh, it's a, it's almost mostly our uh, um nylon strings or metal strings because that's why they use the artificial nails so they can make a better articulation and they can make the sound project well. Um, when you use the flash, it, you, you muffle the sound a little bit. You have different kind of timbre. Uh, it's darker and then dimmer. Um, and when you use the, we, artificial nails, it has brighter sound. And the other timbers I created here is the using the left side of the bridge. So the Zheng has uh, a bridge in the middle and then on the left side, you have this uh, out of tune uh, strings very randomly uh, line up. So then if you play this thing, this side, you get very ghostly uh, haunting sound. And then the third one, timbers created by alternating actual note and harmonic. So basically, for example, if you see this, uh, this E, so you can fast alternate between this, you know, very sparkling transparent harmonics uh, with the actual E. Sorry, I didn't put the, the clef uh, here. And then the fourth, uh, element timbers created by heating of the nail instead of uh, plucking. So here uh, you actually don't really pluck the strings. You use the the, the tip of the nail, uh, artificial nails, uh, to tapping the strings and also harmonic uh, in, in harmonic notes. So you have very very gentle. It's almost like a wood block. Um, sound. And then uh, you can also see uh, here, number five. So you're basically moving between the Yue Shan here, this is two character Chinese character means um, the tuning pack areas. Uh, and then you're moving from the tuning pack areas gradually to the bridge. So basically you're having very, very interesting uh, sound uh, because you, you the touching point, the harmonic touching point in be, there between the harmonic touching point and a, and the tuning pack area. There are you know quite lengthy area, and then you can do some interesting effects by moving the uh, plucking points. So and then the last one I used a uh, pretty effective is that you scratching the single string uh, by, uh, sorry, wrong, by 
by you, you uh, by two fingers, two fingernails. You you grab it, uh, pinch the string, uh, sorry, pinch the string by nails, scratch and move back to you know from one point to another point. So you have this kind of a zipper sound. Uh, so if you, uh, I also put the uh, page numbers next to each uh, sound effect. So you know where you can find these actual uh, areas and while you listen to this piece. And for the double bass, um, uh, I've used these kind of, uh, the three major uh, timbre elements. Um, for, uh, I'm not, I, did, I don't have, I didn't really uh, put all the examples here, but I mean, we're all musicians or we know music a lot. So we basically know what's going on between supon and supon and supasto ordinario. So you're moving around between the different area of the strings and you get different kind of uh, sound qualities. Um, timbre created by actual note pits, overtone pits, Bartok pits, because it's double bass, it's, a, it's a much easier compared to other instruments to produce overtone pits. So it's quite effective. Um, I love that kind of a sound. In the Bartok pits, you have different kind of pits. And the timbre created by using different bow techniques, you know, bow hair batuto, different parts of the bow, less pitched batuto to more pitched batuto. So basically you can see in this whole area, uh, while the notes going on, you, you have to keep moving the bow. Uh, trying to use different parts of the bow to touch, to produce these notes in order to get from more percussive and less pitched sound to a more uh, pitched sound uh, with less percussive effects. So uh, it's quite uh, you know, demanding because you have to be very mindful while you're playing all the, these notes and it's pretty fast. Um, it requires a lot of attention and a technical ability from the musician. Um, so these are basically you, what so far you've seen is that how I uh, how I choose uh, different timbre elements from these two instruments. You know, it's a duet. It's pretty simple. I can go over with all these two instruments. But when you deal with lots of instruments, I can't. Uh, but you can get a basic idea. But the more important things that how I deal with the, their timbres, how I uh, interweave these timbre uh, elements is that I have these basic strategies. So the first one is pretty simple. So I call it the same pitch principle. So basically, if you want to hear the timbre differences, and if you put them on the same pitch, it's so much easier. You can you can sense, you can perceive the differences. You can perceive the timbre, uh, you know, differences. Uh, that's quite amazing. Uh, so when you treat in that way, people's tension not really pay attention too much about the melodic lines or rhythmic lines. They actually I can really really easy. It's easy for them to feel, to perceive uh, the colors. Uh, and that's how we, how I orchestrate. And now I will show you some, show you the score. You can see how I deal with this. And then matching similar finger techniques because bass can also be plucked, be pits. Uh, so uh, some tremolos, I mean, I've just put a few uh, examples. So, trying to let the plucked instruments and work with other instruments that can be plucked. Uh, so that kind of easy, uh, but the, with the same technique, uh, you can hear different sounds from different instruments. Otherwise you will be, you know, you, your, your, your attention will be distracted by other uh, music elements, right? Um, the third one is kind of a more abstract. It the means energy or personality transferring or transforming between the two instruments. So that means if you 
uh, it's like the ripple. Uh, it's like a ricochet. If you throw a stone into the water and then you have those ripples. So uh, if you have something taking place uh, in the drum, and then how this sound will be carried by double bass or vice versa. Uh, so that's the three thing, three basic strategies I'm trying to work on. If we only talk about orchestration solely, I mean, I'm not really trying to touch the mo motive uh, uh, development. So let's take a look of the uh, score. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, so let's look at the score. You see how I, for example, um, the same same note principle, for example, you have this D and then the double bass is D here. So it's, it's a tuned uh, whole step up uh, the double bass. So that's why this is the sounding pitch is D, this sounding pitch E flat. So anyway, so you hear this, you have this Chinese gen pluck this D, very deep, very profound, and then you have the ripple. So uh, uh, the ripple is um, uh, presented by the double bass. Uh, same here, you see you have A, D, A, D, and then you have the double bass A, D. So, it's a pretty simple, but I found it's quite quite mysterious. When people hear this area, they feel it's one instrument instead of two instruments, because they meld so well. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so lots of uh, this kind of uh, uh, writing, this kind of writing. So here you see these almost like a the the harmonic sequence. Bum, 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 bum. You have all these things. And okay, let's take a look another. Uh, so I've mentioned, talk about these. Uh, oh, here. Uh, you have all these uh, plucked notes, and then with all this ricochet here, this free ricochet, and then you get all these. Uh, What's it called? The energy transferring or energy transforming. It depends how you understand it, you know. Um, and then this uh, uh, ricochet glissando, and then you have drum glissando on the different uh, strings. So you have different kind of a um, glissando thing. And here the harmonics, and then um yeah here uh we have all these I've, i showed you the the interesting motions uh by using different areas of the bow and here also very similar bar target pits um and then tremolo for example here we have a tremolo Oh here. Uh, so double bass have a tremolo supont. Uh, it's pretty kind of electric kind of a sound effect. And uh, when you jung doing the tremolo and with the fingernails, it's pretty bright sound. It is melting very well and they're blending perfectly. And so here we have all these uh Cool effects. Here you have very percussive double bass sound and boom, 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 boom. It's almost like a little drum, drumming. And then gradually from the last pitched uh, uh, notes to the more pitched, and then gradually moving on all to these melodic contours with actual notes. Uh, here. Yeah, here's the left hand. Um, 
uh, sound effect. Uh, you have this uh, very chromatic uh, twisted uh, lines going on uh, on the double bass. Then you have a zheng uh, bending the D string because the zheng is also good at bending pitches. So if you press, you use your left hand to press the string, and then you have this very bending effect, and at the same time you're doing tremolo here. So you're almost like having a, you have a, this kind of a, kind of almost like a tornado kind of a sound effect going on. And then uh, because the zheng doesn't move around because they have very limited uh, realm between for the pitch, bending pitch, but the double bass can move in much more uh, obviously then you hear the direction you hear this how this tornado uh moving from low area to the high area and then back to the low area is uh, you know turning up and down all the time so here you have these uh melodic uh, lines uh, so pits yeah pits now I, I mentioned the same uh performing technique so double bass doing the pits and also doing glissando. You have a glissando pits, glissando. You have harmonic pits. Uh, you have a, a moving around. It's like doing a portamento. Now uh, you have this burn or burn. You have all these uh, portamento pits. Uh, if you know Chinese instruments, you would think all oh, this is almost like a ching. A uh, gu ching is like a Seven, seven string zither. That's how we do uh, this kind of thing uh, in gu, gu qing, uh, in Chinese qing, Chinese zither. Mm. So you have the uh, zheng doing the harmonic pads, harmonic plucking. So the overall here, you know, the bar 102, uh, you hear this very beautiful, it's almost like a sparkling water effect. Uh, if you follow the score and then listen to listen to the piece, you hear, you know what I mean. Um, um, so similar techniques, trying to help the two instruments uh, uh, work together. Uh, so the last thing is you have this uh, fingernail tapping the strings, harmonic tap harmonic strings while the double bass doing ricochet. Uh, you have different layers. Here you hear different layers of a, a, a drumming sound. Um, because these harmonics, is, they're not, uh, let's say, um, here, it's, uh, gradually move towards. So because you're not really in the actual harmonic touching point, so you, your, your, the harmonic outcome is not very uh, well-rounded. It's just kind of a darker sound. So uh, I have a little video clip sh to show you. Uh, so they have different um, possibilities here. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. Sorry. Here, see, here is the normal touching point for, you know, for a regular harmonic. But then the zheng player can do, can vary it, can alternate to can create something strange. So you see her left finger, her left pinky finger is touching the bridge. So actually you hear actually the same note, but it kind of like harmonic, but it's not harmonic. Um, and then the third one, so she's moving the finger a little bit next to the bridge, not on the bridge. Then you hear another kind of a sound quality, another kind of a timbre. So it's very, very uh, subtle. And because, uh, for example, when the musicians see this area, I told her, oh, can you, uh, play the harmonics, but try to create some 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 sound like a wood block. So she would improvise. She would invent this kind of sound. Uh, 
All right, so uh, we were at the uh, harmonic things on the on the on the uh, uh, gen. So anyway, so uh, so basically, I use these three strategies to uh, trying to blend all two instruments um, by using different same finger techniques, um, same pitch principles and um, you know transferring energies between so basically it's like one taking other taking over the energy from the other instrument uh, vice versa and the second piece emanation of tara is for clarinet violin cello piano pipa uh, clarinet has a uh, doubling uh, bass clarinet uh, here the pipa uh, which is Slightly different from Zheng is, you know, the up, upright holding, um, arm holding instrument is plucked string instrument, and and the peep, the pipa has a lot of uh, uh, right and right and right hand and left hand techniques. I deliberately gave more focus on the uh, on the left hand techniques because left hand uh, pipa's left hand has more for me, you can produce more sound palette. Uh, you have bigger sound palette. Uh, the first one, uh, I, I've made an example here, horizontally push and pull a string to get the bending sound. So it's horizontally because the string is this up, uh, uh, upright instrument. Then you have to moving the strings in and out. Uh, so it's called the push and the pull. Um, uh, so here you have this bending sound, and they basically you can have minus third. And then the left hand pits and the left hand tap. So the pits, uh, I use, we use this comma to indicate. And then the J here is the tap. Um, so either way, you, you can uh, left hand pits to sound by you know the, the the finger flash and then tap uh you have kind of weaker very pretty weak sound but you know it's a solo instrument that you you hear all these effects at, at, at in the, uh, after all and then the natural harmonics and artificial harmonics here this is a uh, artificial harmonics um so here i put the artificial harmonics. Here is the natural harmonic. So it, you, you mingle around between the two different kinds of harmonic. Because in PIPA, uh, the artificial harmonics are not, not as good as violin or you know the Western instrument. So they are kind of a, like a faking around. So in order to get the kind of overtone sound effect. And then to push the vibrato to the extreme. So as I mentioned that you can use the pull and the pull, push and the pull to, to create a maximum of a, a, a vibrato. So, you know, you can have pretty wild vibrato um, uh, compared to, you know, the Western, you know, violin, viola, cello. Uh, and then sweep, pluck, twisted neighboring strings. So you basically can twist the two neighboring strings to have, uh, and then let them touch together. And then you have this very uh, hoarse, very uh, noisy uh, sound. And of course, there are many layers when you produce this sound. Uh, you can let the two strings, because they're metal, you can let two strings touch each other and while twisting. And then you also can let them not touching each other while twist. So you get different kind of a, a sound effect. It can be, can be subtle. Uh, it depends how the musician like to do in the, in the, in, in the performing time, uh, in the real time. And then six, slap the sound board by fingers. So you have this Chinese word written here. So ask them to do the tapping. It's almost like you, you play the drum, but it's a, a box. 
Yeah. Pits nearby the tuning park, uh, we hear in Chinese, we call the Shan Kou Wai. So it's basically in between the, the tuning park and then the, 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 the crooked area, you, there's uh, some very, very short strings area that you can pluck it to get some kind of noisy and crystal sound. Um, here, for this piece, because this piece is a quintet, so I have more concerns, I have more uh, uh, design, designs about how we deal with this, uh, to these instruments, particularly deal with the pipa and uh, how to I uh, relate pipa with other instruments. So the first one is I'm, I'm my overall compositional scheme for this work. Pipa is treated neither as a cultural messenger nor a soloist. I wanted to be active and adaptable participant in ensemble playing. So that means in in in, in lots of cliche that pipa when you collaborate pipa with Western instruments, you always treat the pipa like the like the star, like the solo, and other accompanying the pipa. Or no matter what, you just put pipa there is already is the symbol for Chinese culture. And no matter how it sounds, it doesn't really, you really uh, give a true, uh, uh, give a real, real interesting practice or interesting or effective treatment to this instrument. So in this piece, I really want to make sure this piece, this instrument can work like a participant, can collaborate with other instruments instead of, so the, the mindset is already built before I composing this piece, rather than, you know, trying to identify the, the trying to identify uh, how, what, what people should do while writing this piece. So the second one, with this myriad of unique tone colors and the finger techniques, pipa is probably the most virtuoso Chinese instrument. So I try to emphasize its very unique characters when writing this piece. So uh, basically, you, you in 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 different kind of contexts, you will see how pipa it's so uh, flexible. It's so. Um, uh, it's like a chameleon changing all all the time in order to fit in a uh, different kind of uh, Western sound context. Mm -hmm. So in many areas, for example, I often let people heterophonically line up with one or more voices in terms of pitch contour and or rhythmic motions, though not exclusively. I mean, that sometimes I, I, I because it's a long piece and only five instruments, then I would definitely, you know, treat each instrument, give them a, a, a voice, it's like a jam, you know, it's like a jazz jam. Um, so my purpose of doing this is to somehow alienate those common ordinary sounds of Western instruments that we are very much familiar with. So, you know, you have a combination of piano, clarinet and cello, then uh, adding a pipa there, uh, they are they are sharing the same pitch contour or rhythmic uh, um, pattern. Then you will be diluted. You know you will you feel mm, what's going on in there. There's something not very pure uh, because you know this where uh, standard Western instruments, the ensembles, they really had the few hundred years of practice of ensemble writing, ensemble sound. They know how to uh lean to each other but when you have a pipa it's it's an invader it's it's a it's you really have to find a ways to you know to hear you know when when pipa is in it and uh, so otherwise the western instruments are very much used in contribution to forming and determining the work's overall harmonic palette so that means because you have piano, you have a cello, you have enough fundamental basses and then uh, harmonic motions, then they are very determinative. Uh, they are they are the, the 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 leader for the whole structure. The pipa is not uh, you know decision maker. Uh, 
So it's uh, so the sorry the last one have the intention of creating series of intricate but spatial sonic networks. So that's overall uh, orchestrational uh, concept. I don't want to. I want to create a very intricate uh, ensemble playing, uh, but not very dense like Brian Finney Hall that kind of dense. Uh, I want to have it very sp spatial so that. Um, in the end, you still hear their individual voices. So these are the uh, basic strategies, which is, uh, you know, this area, this section is more important than, you know, this instrumentation. Um, these instrumentation, you guys can figure out by yourselves when you have an instrument, when you work with a certain instrument. But the basic strategies is very com composer, oriented, you know, that's the choice of a composer or what he wants to do. And uh, you see, I'm not exhausting all the possibility. I'm not using all the possibility, all the techniques. I'm only using some of them in order to, you know, to present a very clear compositional idea, uh, but not uh, doing a demonstration or, you know, sound pool for 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 audience. So uh, if we look at the score, just give you a few examples before I finish my presentation. Um, um, so, Mm. Sorry, I don't think we can see your score. I think you're only oh, showing yeah, Word file, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think you need to start to share um, the actual PDF for the score. Okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me. Mm. Okay. How about right now? Okay, yeah, it's good now. Yeah. Um. I'll give you an example. For example, somewhere, let me see. Um, for example, here, you see the, the clarinet is doing this very low pitches and then with a certain kind of a rhythmic pattern going on. And then your pipa has here, uh, you have very like, Wood within wood within the instrument, and you have pipa almost like doing uh, very similar, but totally different kind of performing techniques. So this so I call this hydrophonic uh, lineup. So you hear this, and then you you're supposed to hear this very pure sound from the clarinet, but somehow it's invaded, it's intruded by the pipa. Uh, now these kind of effects is happen happening a lot of places. Uh, for example, here uh, and then here you hear more. Um, so here is the pipa with the uh, piano. Uh, so here pipa go moving on along with the with the uh, violin. Um, uh, so you can see how they line up, you know, sometimes with three, sometimes with the four. Um, so it depends. I just moving along with them heterophonically. Um, so it's very adaptable. And then here you have these uh, P pass uh, uh, with I call it a sweep. A sweep sound is like a heavy and a certain chord, a very abrupt sound moving on with the uh, cello and then you have piano and then violin doing this fazanto uh, to carry on this kind of uh, striking uh, abrupt sound. Here you have, if you look at the score, you know what I mean. Uh, here you see uh, the, all the instruments doing that kind of a uh, very wavy uh, meandering uh, uh, lines from low to high. And then the 
Pipa is doing free glissando, but glissando shape is almost like these um, lines. So you have all these uh, 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 very watering, very flexible chameleon kind of a uh, character uh, because Pipa is very virtual. So Pipa can do lots of things. Um, here we have this harmonics going on. And the last thing I want to show is the the behind the near nearby the tuning pack area. So have all these pluck sound, plucking noises at the end. Mm, so so here, uh, the violin is also doing uh, behind the bridge plucking. And the pipa is doing behind the plucking, cello is doing behind the plucking. So they are using, uh, you know, same same principle, same kind of a technique on the same area of the instrument. So you basically identify the instrument. They have a similar structure, the, the instrumental structure, and then you using that area to produce sound, and they're using same kind of technique, and then they have a similar rhythmic pattern are but similar but not the same and then you have this kind of beautiful interwoven lines uh interwoven uh kind of a texture and then the network um so uh you know i'm 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 trying to be quick because i i think you all know the you all read the score you listen the pieces so maybe it's time for us to for me to to get some questions from you guys, if you have. Yeah, um, uh, I think, yeah, it's time for a question. If we can keep you for another few minutes, um, if sure. anyone has any questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please go, Benjamin. Um, so, who? Oh, Benjamin. Benjamin. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so so I, I wasn't able to present myself earlier, but I am. Um, I play classical classical double bass at uh, University of Montreal. I see. And I, I was just wondering why um, why you tuned the bass up a tone for the first piece. Oh, it's it's just a standard uh, uh, solo tuning for bass. So, for okay. example, right. 18th century, 19th century, Porticini cello a bass concerto, they tune the bass one uh, whole step up so you have a brighter tighter sound to okay. to be uh, to solo mm. okay right what else? Yeah. question yeah. maybe Robert. on the the use of resonance and i love in the second piece the ensemble piece how mm. much you're using the piano pedal and how much that sense of the the uh, japanese bowl at the end gives you that sense of resonance and ringing uh, one thing I also noticed is that you use a lot of fifths and octaves, these very acoustically resonant intervals. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about kind of that point where the choice of interval or harmony connects mm. with the sound. Mm. It's a, it's very intentional. I mean, using fifth is very intentional um, because if you want to have a thicker and up upright sound when you're writing ensemble music you must uh, utilize the harmonic sequences if you don't know if you are trying to not trying to uh, ignore the harmonic sequence you won't get a good sound because we are still dealing with traditional instruments we're not dealing with newly invented instruments Right, because uh, the tuning uh, is still the violin is uh, stays for like a few hundred years, you know, uh, and the, the old instruments they they still uh, the whole the structure is based on the their particular tuning, uh, the fifth. So I find it's quite effective when I want to create a thicker, I mean thicker but. Um, no, uh, more upright sound, you know, not thicker, you know, upright and transparent sound. I found it's for me, it's very appealing, the sound. But of course, I using, uh, I also use 
uh, uh, micro, uh, chromatic tones, uh, half steps. Uh, I'm also using glissandos a lot. Uh, the very, uh, you know, very undefined glissandos. You know, you're not calculating the quarter tone or not. Uh, I'm not doing that quarter tone or, or um, a microtone music. So, but I want to have that kind of a glissando effect, portamento effect. So, uh, so you have the, all these basic elements. You know, you have a fifth. You have minor tones. You have glissandos. Uh, that's how I build up my uh, my music. Uh, you can sound the palette, but also you see I probably also use uh, 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 third based triad triads uh, or, or seventh chords, but they are not using in the tonal functional uh, system. They are just very independent. They have a they have a tonal gestures, but they have they are not tonal music. Uh, you know because you you, you there's no function aligned to to this music it's not like from one to five five to you know to seven something like that yeah i could ask a quick follow-up on that do you also think higher in the harmonic series so you have the octave and the fifth do you think about the the third that you find in the harmonic series the seventh and things like of that course. yeah 11th you know sometimes i you know the mission uh, always thinks that the 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 and the, the ending of a phrase should be the 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 the, the sharp fourth to the one. So the, the for example, if you want to resolve from five to one, it's not from G to C, it's from F sharp to G. Because he believes this eleventh uh the the overtone is the last uh, overtone human being can hear. And then, so that's why he believes that when we end the music and the piece of music, we should end from F sharp to C instead of G to C. Um, if we are in talking about the C major music, uh, <clears throat> that's quite a, for me, it's quite interesting. Uh, but I mean, I'm not really following his rule or the, or the, the traditional, you know, Palestalina rule, uh, you know, by second. Basically, I I using I'm I, um, I'm not calculating all the harmonic sequence when I'm writing, but I'm very attentive 